Welcome to Thursday's solo episode. Um, It's recycle day or garbage day, whatever you want to call it. And I'm sure the trucks are going to go by as I'm recording and Bubbles is in the room. I usually bring him downstairs when I record, but sometimes I like to just keep him in the room. I feel bad putting him downstairs. So um, he's right there in front of the camera. So if the people come collect recycling, we might have an issue. So anywho, um, welcome. My nails, my toenails are... A hideous color if you are watching on YouTube they're like if I was gonna choose Halloween nails or nails that look like slime on a kid's game show remember the show Uh oh in Canada it's literally the color of the green slime and when I was looking at the you know they give you the wheel of all the colors it looked like a sea foam cute like spring green and I'm so busy on my phone when they're painting my nails that I didn't even look at it and usually they're like oh you like this but even like I'm such I don't want to make people feel bad or like do more work so I would never be like oh can I change colors actually I would never so these are the nails that I have they're like Halloween slime nails and I wanted to talk about why And I'm sure many of you will probably relate to this. Usually when you go to book a pedicure online, and this was a place that I had never been before, but the place that I usually go to, they say like, who do you want to book your appointment with? Any female staff, any male staff, any staff at all, or like you can pick a specific person if there's someone that you go to regularly. So usually... I just pick any female staff. So that's what I picked when I booked this appointment because I don't know why I always feel weird if it's a man doing my nails. Like why? I don't know. It's same if I go to a spa or something and I book a massage, I will be selecting like female massage therapist. Even though when I was in university at Laurentian, I had terrible neck problems from studying, I think, so much, Um, like nerd neck, I'm going to call it. And I would go see this guy who was a massage therapist, but more like a, because it's not like you're going to a spa and they're playing relaxing music and, and like, it's like a sensual rub down. You know what I mean? Like, I hate massages like that. It's not relaxing at all. When I go to a massage, I want it to be like a medical intervention. Like I want you to destroy my muscles. So I was seeing a massage therapist um, throughout university that was a man, but it was very like he was just trying to help me and he happened to be a massage therapist and was doing like manual, like more of like a treatment as opposed to like, ooh, like let's relax and rub oils on you. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, um, so I always select Bubby. Don't start. I always select female for pedicures or massages, whatever. So I get there and she's like, oh, like, do you have any preference for who does your nails and I thought that was a weird question because like you already fucking asked me that online and I said yeah like I do but me being like and here's the thing like I'm not I wouldn't call myself a people pleaser but I am I am like a I will try and make your life easier and I don't want to come off as being like rude or difficult do you know what I'm saying uh anyways so she's like oh like do you do you like have a preference for who does your nails? And I said, no, when I was like checking in and she's like, okay, like, come on this way. Like, I'll bring you the colors, blah, blah, blah. And then I was like, oh my God, she probably asked me that because the person that's available right now so that I don't have to wait is probably a guy. Um, but I'm like, Renee, you can do this. It's fine. It's going to be fine. So he was like a young guy and it's like, I don't know why it's awkward. Like, can anybody 
please like leave a comment somewhere or message me on the podcast account and tell me like, do you feel the same way? And why do we feel that way? Why? Um, so I got over it pretty quickly, which is the good news. I was like, Renee, like this is his job, like get over it. Um, do you guys watch 90 Day Fiance and what was his name? Caesar was the guy that was the nail tech on 90 Day Fiance. He lived in Florida, I believe. Anyways, he his storyline was so like cute and hilarious. And my husband and I were always like, oh my God, Caesar. And so this is such a random like offshoot of this story, but what was it for my husband's birthday or for Father's Day or something a couple years ago? I did a cameo. So cameo is like this website. There's like celebrities and kind of like D-list celebrities, influencers, people like that who you can hire to create a little video and they'll send it to you. Um, you just give them a little bit of information, like who's the video for? What's it? What is? What is it for? So I booked Caesar for a cameo for my husband. I gotta find it and I will try and share it. Um, hilarious. <laughs> and then also, it was so funny that, okay, my mom loved Annie and David, I think their name was. And I booked a cameo for my mom from Annie and David, like just hilarious. So I'm going to look back and find those videos and I will share. So anywho, Caesar was the male nail tech, which made me think of that. So I got over it quickly and when it came, I booked the more expensive pedicure because I wanted the extra 10 minutes of like calf and foot massage because they're always so sore. And oh my God, like if a usual massage when you get a pedicure is like, I would rate it like a four. This was like a 12. It was so painful, but like the good kind of painful where it's like, oh my God, my muscles are so sore. It's the kind of soreness where you don't realize how sore you are until you get a massage. Like when I go see my usual massage girl, she does my, um, what's this called? Forearm and the tendons that come from my elbows. And I could literally fucking cry. And I'm like, this is so painful, so painful. But it's not like I walk around during the day with like, oh, my elbow's sore. Like, no, it's just as soon as they get into those tendons, which are so freaking tight, it is painful. And so that's what it felt like on my calves and even like the tendons along the top of my feet and my ankles. I was like, can I come back every week and just book you for an hour calf and foot massage? And I was trying not to be creepy and like staring at him, but I was like, I need to teach my husband whatever it is that he's doing. And to be honest, like my husband drives me a little bit nuts when it comes to massages because me, my sister, my friends, like we will always give each other massages and like switch. Like, okay, we'll do like 10 minutes. Like I'll do, I'll massage your shoulders and then we'll go back and forth. Does anybody else do this or is this sounding strange to you? Um, so I try and do that with my husband, but first of all, men, and I'm generalizing, cannot take pain especially when it comes to like muscle pain. They are the worst. And it's like, I understand why women give birth and get pregnant and all that stuff because they just could never. Um, I try if my husband's like, oh, like I have a sore shoulder or whatever, I'll try and fix it for him. And like, I'm very talented. Like I will fix your issue. He cannot stand any pressure whatsoever. And it drives me nuts because in my mind, I'm like, I'm trying to help you like stop. So anyways, I always ask my husband, can you like rub my shoulders or rub my, like my calf muscle or whatever it is, my elbow. I often get him to rub that elbow tendon. And like, he needs help understanding how to massage. 
like so badly, so badly. And I don't know if it's like a lack of motivation. Like he just doesn't want to do it. And so he's half assing it, but it's like, he'll start doing it properly. And then within 30 seconds, it's like, he's forgotten what he's doing and you know, like barely giving effort and it drives me batshit crazy. Um, or his thumbs get sore. And I always say like, well then strengthen your thumbs. Like I could massage someone the deepest tissue ever, like massage for an hour and I will be fine. Like grip strength, I should be on America's Ninja America what warrior, whatever it's called. America's Ninja Warrior, American Ninja Warrior. Um, like me, I don't know, like I played volleyball, basketball. So maybe my hands are just abnormally strong, but like my friends can massage me for 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes, deep tissue pressure with their thumbs. So like, why can't you, are you using that as an excuse? And then he says like, Oh, because he's a surgeon. He's like, I don't use my hands like that. Like we do fine motor skills, not, you know, like I'm not a freaking carpenter or what did he say? Orthopedic surgeon. (laughs) And I was like, well, maybe you should start working out your hands. Like this is a big deal to me. Like I am obsessed with massage. When we move into our new house, I would literally love to have an extra room where we could have like a massage table and like be able to like properly massage each other, watch YouTube videos and like learn how to actually do it. I am obsessed with massage or at least have a massage table. And in the meantime, while my husband's strengthening his hands and learning how like to use proper massage techniques. I could have a masseuse come to the house maybe if people do that. I don't know if they do that, but I'm sure they do. If they'll come to your house and give you a spray tan, there's got to be a massage therapist that will go to people's houses. Um, And I'm sure most of them bring their own table, but maybe I'll already have a table set up in like a massage room where I also put my Peloton and a yoga mat and it's like a wellness room. That's my goals. Um, So anyways, the massage, like I could not believe it. That's that, that like pedicure by a man story was supposed to be like three minutes and we're almost at 13. That's why I have a podcast. And this is why I want to do a solo every day. This is my plan. I don't think I've said this anywhere else yet. My plan, and I have a meeting tomorrow with the podcast network to discuss this, is to do a daily solo episode for the summertime, so July and August. Now, some of these solos might be five minutes. Some of these solos could be a half hour. I don't know how it's going to go. I'm just going to wake up and record right away and put it up so that it's like in real time, basically. Um, So we'll see how that goes. The meeting is just to determine whether or not it's going to be a part of the Mom Room podcast or it's going to be a separate podcast in and of itself. And then it's kind of like a a trial run to see if that's something that I want to continue doing once school starts up again. Um, Who knows? Maybe I'll love it. Maybe I'll hate it. We'll see how it goes. Um, A lot of people, when I put up the Ask Me Anything sticker, wanted to know about the house hunt thing and people were like what are your must-haves for a new house so I made a little list but again it varies depending on whether we're looking at the house as being like a five-year house versus like a 15-20 year house because there's two different kind of houses if it was Okay, so one thing that we definitely, definitely need, like I need an office, non-negotiable. The ensuite bathroom has to have a tub. I'm obsessed with baths. If the house has a hot tub or we put a hot tub in the backyard, then I could maybe forego a bath in the master. But I feel like having a hot tub outside is not the same thing as a relaxing bath in your bathroom. So I kind of want an ensuite bathtub. That's like my 
relax time. If I'm like having a day or I feel stressed or I'm just like burnt out, I always crave having a bath. So I wouldn't want to not have that. One thing we've noticed just looking at houses, because a lot of the houses we look at are turnkey. They're not like fixer uppers, let's say. And to be honest, I would love to be a person that's like, let's buy this house. It's cheaper. We have money to put into it, to renovate to exactly our liking with all the finishes that we love. I would love to do that if I had a team of people that would take care of it and also an office outside of the house that I could work in while they're renovating the house. Because I work from home, I record, I have meetings constantly. I can't have people working in the house while I'm there. So we would like to have a turnkey house because we fucking suck at anything. We can barely hang a photo. I'm not even kidding. This mom room sign, like this neon sign sat in my office for months before my dad came to put it up because I don't trust us to do anything. And this was a little bit unique in that you put three holes with like an anchor and you screw, like the holes had to be at exactly the right location to screw the sign on. And I was like, there's no way, like there's no way we're doing that properly. Anything we do sucks. So, and don't feel bad because like my husband can remove people's kidneys and they will live to tell the tale. So like home renovation stuff is just not his thing and that's okay. He has many other skills that are very important. Um, But yeah, so if we bought a fixer upper, it would just be a nightmare. And I feel like we would never get around to doing anything and we would have to hire somebody to do every little thing. So we're looking for something that's kind of turnkey that already has finishes and everything that we like. That is difficult because I find so many houses are so dated, but they're still so expensive. So it's like, okay, we're going to buy this house for X number of dollars, but we still would want to put in a ton of money to fix it up to be to our liking. So anyways, a lot of the houses, because I also want more of a, how do you call it? Matured neighborhood with trees and whatnot. A lot of the newer houses that have a lot of what we're looking for are in the cookie cutter kind of neighborhoods where there's like a million houses squished together which is fine. Like I will do that if we're thinking in terms of like it being a five-year house, but for a long-term house, I want uh, a property that is more like a little bit private. And I don't mean like not having neighbors. I just don't want a house right in my backyard, like people watching me eat dinner or play outside with Milo right from their house, you know? Um, So a lot of the new builds that have everything we're looking for are in that kind of situation, which is so infuriating. But if it's a five-year house, we will do that. It's not a big deal. Um, But we have found some houses that are older that have been renovated in a mature neighborhood, but they have these like weird quirks to them. A lot of these renovated houses have no front entrance. It's like the house, you just walk into the dining room or you walk right into the living room. There's no closet. There's no nothing, which with a child is not ideal. We use our front door a lot. So, and like you've seen our front closet at our current house. Like, can you imagine us not having a closet? It's crazy. And some of those houses barely have a mudroom too that connects to the garage so like we need a front entrance we need a closet we need a mudroom we need storage um so yeah it's hit or miss like I so far I've found that when they renovate an older home there's lots of things that like most often they have tiny closets and it's like new builds are in shitty neighborhoods and I shouldn't I shouldn't I I I Oh my God, I shouldn't say shitty because we are in a cookie cutter. That's what I call it, by the way, a cookie cutter neighborhood right now. And I love it. 
I just don't want someone right in my backyard. Um, and where we are now, we're on a curve in the road. So we have a big backyard because we're like in the middle of the curve, but that means that there's houses that like wrap around our backyard and it's just like we're in a fishbowl, my mom calls it. So if I could be in a cookie cutter neighborhood on a cul-de-sac or something where you have privacy in the backyard, that's like ideal because I do like a neighborhood like this because it is a lot of young families. There's lots of kids for Milo to play with. They usually have a park down the road. There's like trails to walk in. There are huge benefits to these neighborhoods, but I want a house that has privacy in the backyard. So it's just been really difficult to find something that checks most of the boxes. It's like, oh, we found a house. Oh, but there's absolutely no office or, you know, like, something really important to us they don't have and so we've just been looking and looking oh, and looking and it's a little bit getting stressful because we have to move in July and it's almost May and yeah we're just like waiting for something to come up because I don't want to settle we have moved so much in the last like 10 years I do not want to move Again, so if we can find a long-term house, that would be amazing, but we shall see. Um, I've been really into HGTV lately. I love HGTV. It's just so relaxing to me. I just love it. Um, and I see people, like I see them flip these older homes and I'm just like, God, I wish, like I wish, because you could have a house that's like perfect, exactly what you want but we just, we cannot. Um, before I go, I wanted to go through some more questions that people asked on the Ask Me Anything uh, sticker. Somebody said, do you take antidepressants? I take an antidepressant, but for the purposes of anxiety, citalopram is, I think, I think like the the main purpose of citalopram is for depression, but it also is used to treat anxiety. So that's what I take 20 milligrams a day. Um, I've been taking it since I was in my master's program. I've gone on and off like a couple times. Uh, every time I've gone off anxiety has like come back in full force, especially generalized anxieties to the point where like, I don't even have anything to be anxious about, but I'll be like, waiting in line to get my pick up my license or something and this happened when we lived in Victoria I just had to go pick up my new license at the service BC or whatever it's called there and raging anxiety to go up to the counter to just like tell the girl my name and address and get a new license I was dying inside I thought I was gonna have to go home and I went up to the counter and I was like it for me it's like I can't speak it's such a weird feeling and anyways I made it through that thing and then it would happen again and again like going through customs at the airport they were like oh like you're doing your PhD oh like wh like what what's your PhD in and I was like oh my god I can't even talk to this person like get me out of here I'm dying so I went back on it um I take a fairly low dose every day and it's been life-changing and I also for big things that are going to make me like really 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 anxious I will take clonazepam which is like a take as you need kind of thing which reminds me I need to get more of those why is there someone parked outside my house sorry I'm just investigating Oh my God, weird. Anyways, um, so yes, I do. Somebody said, you have to go back to LA and do a tour. Okay, so I also have a meeting this week to discuss doing a live event in Toronto. It's very scary to think about doing a live event. It's something that I really want to do. And like a goal would be to do a tour. I would love to do that. I don't know why, because I'm so anxious about stuff like that, 
but I can't stop trying to do things that make me anxious. Like, what is my problem? I don't know why I do this to myself. Anyways, um, I would love to do a tour. Like, even if it was just in like a few cities, that would be so fun. Um, so I do have a meeting this week to discuss a live event in the fall in Toronto. But like, it's so stressful to think about having to sell tickets. That is so stressful to me. And like, it would be a small little venue, but still, I'm like, people actually have to buy a ticket and like come to, like, it just blows my mind. Like I'm not Justin Bieber. So it's just so crazy. And like, I went and saw Jay Shetty not too long ago. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. Like I would love to put together a show like this for moms like it was very interactive it was very just like made you think and yeah I loved it and I was like I could do that like I could set up a show like this but it's just like oh I just freak out when I when I think about having to sell tickets like okay I know my mom would go uh my mama who else I have like a handful of friends okay so there's like seven tickets sold uh crickets. Anyways, it's weird. I hope it happens. We probably will do a live event this fall, but not without anxiety. So now I like imagine you're an artist or like a like a singer or something and you like put out a tour or you're a comedian and you like put out a tour to sell tickets. Like, ooh, so scary. Um okay. My favorite piece of clothing right now, I'm obsessed with these cargo pants that I'm wearing right now. I have two colors. I have the dark gray and this like brown color. They're from Lululemon. They're so comfortable on the waist. Like they're not tight at all. They don't wrinkle. So they're great to pack. I throw on a t-shirt with it and like a cardigan or something. And I just feel like I look a little bit more stylish than if I had leggings on or jeans. So yeah, these are my favorite piece of clothing. Lululemon cargo pants. I've I've shared them on my stories a few times, um, but I, maybe I'll share them again. And I think they put out new colors for spring and summer. So I will check that out also. Somebody asked, do I get fries or onion rings? I get sweet potato fries if they are an option. And I'm obsessed with sweet potato fries, like obsessed. And also if you just cut up a sweet potato in fry shapes, put it in a bowl, mix it with coconut oil. So if you get a jar of coconut oil and coconut oil at room temperature is like a little bit hard. It's like a butter consistency scoop up a spoonful, put it in the bowl, mix it around until it coats all the sweet potato fries, salt, pepper, throw it in the air fryer for like 22 minutes. Like keep checking on it halfway through, shake them up, you know, that whole ordeal. Amazing. Like my mouth's watering. Uh, so sweet potato fries for sure. But if we go to a and or somewhere where they have onion rings, My husband usually gets onion rings and I will steal a few from him because I, I want an onion ring, but I don't want to commit to like a full serving of onion rings. I just want a few of your onion rings, if that makes sense. So that's that on that. Uh, Do I speak French? Un petit peu. Okay. That means a little bit. Uh, in Canada, we take French class till, I think you have to take it till grade nine. And after grade nine, I quit. Oh my God. I was about to have my first sneeze on the podcast, but I got, it ruined it. Oh my God. It got ruined because I was like, oh my God, I've never sneezed on the podcast before. And then it went away. It's like the worst. Um, So yeah, I do speak a little bit of French. I can understand it to some degree. Uh, But I mean, I wouldn't say I'm like, I'm not fluent at all. I'm just, how do you say it? Like a casual 
French speaker. Like I know words and it's hard for me to put a sentence together, but my family is like my mom can understand French and she speaks it okay. And my mama is like super French. She can speak French and understand French perfectly. So, so that, um, what am I at here? So somebody asked if Milo knows that we're moving and he does, like he knows that we're finding a new house. And it's really funny because he was like, we were like, yeah, we're, cause he's had to come look at houses with us a few times. And so we're like, yeah, like we're looking for a new house. And he's like, oh good. I don't like this house anymore. And I'm like, okay, um, rude. But he knows that we're finding a new house but I don't think he understands that he's going to be switching schools and we're not going to be living like in this area anymore. Uh, eventually we will explain that to him. I don't want to do it right now because like he's still in school and he has time to, you know, hang out with his friends. I don't want him to worry about it. I'm happy that we're moving in the summertime because it's like the perfect transition to start a new school in September. So we'll see. Hopefully he can make a few friends in the neighborhood this summer um, and have you know, like a familiar face or two when he does start senior kindergarten in September. But it does suck. I'm happy that we're doing it now when he's younger and not later. And that's what I told my husband. Like when we pick a house, it has to be in the location that we want to live in because I'm not moving Milo school districts in a few years. I'm not. So it's like one more transition. You know, it was a big deal to go from daycare to school. And now it's going to be like one more transition to senior kindergarten at a new school, hoping it goes well, but obviously there could be an adjustment there. So we shall see. But he does know that we're getting a new house, but I don't think he understands what that means. Oh my God, it was so funny. I was driving him to school the other day and he was like, so, so like, we're, we're going to live in a new house. I was like, yeah, like we're going to find a new house. And he's like, well, we have to make sure there's no cars in the driveway so that we know that there's no people living there. I was like, oh my God, you're so cute. Like, the way their little brains think is hilarious. Um, so that's that, everybody. This has been swell. I'm so looking forward to doing a daily solo episode because I could just talk, talk, talk about a million things. Um, if you haven't already, please follow at the Mom Room Podcast on Instagram. I recently hired a content creator and it has been going so well. So excited to have somebody helping me with that stuff. Um, you can find full episodes, video versions on YouTube at the Mom Room Podcast on YouTube. On TikTok, I'm still Renee Rena with a little underscore thinking about changing my name, but we'll see. And then my account on Instagram is just the Mom Room. So Thank you so much for listening. If you haven't already, please rate, review, subscribe, follow, whatever they tell you to do on the platform that you're listening on. And yeah, thank you so much for listening. And I hope your children sleep tonight and tomorrow night and all the nights. Okay. And you sleep too. Okay, bye.